Pat, really enjoyed you on this morning's Investor Talk. And Jack was saying you are the closest chance we have of a heavy rare earth processor in North America. Is that correct? I believe so, yeah. We have our commercial demo plant in Kingston, as you're aware, uh, Tracy. And, and, you know, we're running thousands of hours on that plant. And, and so far, we've started, we've run synthetic um, feedstock through the plant, synthetic rare earth feedstock separating heavy from lights, that's the easy stuff. But then we've actually run heavy rare earth products through the facility in Kingston. And, um, you know, in, in doing that, you're you're looking at all kinds of stuff. Where does the radioactivity fall out? Um, you compare it head to head with solvent extraction. We have a solvent extraction plant right beside the uh, Rapid SX uh, demo plant, which is quite su uh, substantial. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we've got feedstock uh, lined up that we'll hear about uh, in a news flow here hopefully before the end of the year. And uh, it's heavy rare earth. We're, uh, we're dealing with uh, all that needs to be dealt with. It was all the talk about radioactivity and how do, you, how do you deal with it? Well, quite frankly, on our side of things, you've got to control the inputs and the strategic metals complex in Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana is one of the most stringent uh, radioactive areas uh, in the US. And um, you know we understand all the regulations, we understand the inputs, we understand where the radioactivity is falling out. That includes uh, radium, thorium, um, you know, uranium, and um, testing all of that. So yeah, we're, we're, we're close to processing uh, heavy rare earth. Uh, the, the plan start plant in, in um, or the, the launch plan for the end of 24 in Louisiana is 900 ton per annum of uh, heavy rare earth, exterium, et cetera, um, another 1600 tons in light rare earth on top of that. But yeah, we are, we are close. Well, that's a, that's a great, catalyst for my next question, which is UCOR has really evolved and transformed itself into a technology leader in the critical minerals sector. Um, can you give us an update on how that's transpiring? Because you're not just in Kingston, Ontario, you're also in Louisiana. So you're a North American technology play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the key here is that you've got to take the important problems, i.e. we need rarer supply chains and you've got to bring them to commercial scale. Uh, I've had a career of doing that uh, in the automotive industry, bringing uh, important product and solutions to commercial scale. And um, yeah, we're we're um, we're engineering quite extensively. We've been at it for a year and a half, uh, engineering the uh, the inputs for the Louisiana plant, the outputs for the Louisiana plant, the the internal workings of the plant itself, and how that all looks. Um, very complicated uh, activity, but our our tech is really. Um, uh, conducive to uh, scalable modular, um, you know, ramp up, if you will. And um, in Louisiana, we've got uh, three light rare earth lines, SX123, and then times three, and then three heavy rare earth lines. That's to start the plant. And then you double that and you go to six lights and six heavies as you go from a 2,500 ton plant to a uh, 5,000 ton plant. So all of it uh, coming together again, it, it's, it's, um, less complicated engineering because of the rapid SX technology. And um, we're, on a, we're on a really good path here. Pat, you've always been a favorite in the industry, but now you seem to be a favorite as well in governments, both Canadian and Americans. Do you have to pick a side or who's your favorite right now? Well, you know, actually, thankfully, uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act, it, it is a cross-border, wide-open uh, field. And the, uh, the DOD award that you mentioned, which was just an initial $4 million award with DOD to run run multiple hours on a rapid SX commercial demo plan to show DOD what the commercial uh, full scale would look like. Uh, th that's an open-ended contract and it allows you to um, add on. And then that's the intent is to add on with more government funding. And, um, you know, when that bid came out uh, in April of uh, 22, or sorry, Q4 of 22, uh, it was a request across North America, and and we, a Canadian company, uh, won the award. So, very uh, very good path forward. Now, NRCAN, of course, didn't take that lightly. It was what's a Canadian company doing get an award from DoD? So we'll actually be entertaining NRCAN this month, the month of September. And um, again, uh, no favorites, all for one, one for all. Let, let's get the government money put in the right place and move it forward. And you know, to your previous question, we are a technology company now. We're we're um, we're not a, a mining resource company. A technology, mid-market processing, being smart with westernized tech, uh, 
be ESG centric, look at your power consumption, look at your advantages versus current technology and, and uh, kick some butt. And that, that's what we're up to. This is for serious investors. You know, a lot of people are talking to me about the market these days, Pat, and I say this is an amazing opportunity for investors that really like to pull up their sleeves and invest in extraordinary opportunities. Now, earlier we were hearing from a member of your team about what a robust model you have and as well some of the boring stuff in an, in that you've been doing a lot of engineering recently. We're interested in the boring stuff. Can you give us an update? <laughs> the boring stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to have economic models that, that work, right? And, and so in order to develop economic models, you've got to actually have uh, tried and tested uh, process hours, hours, thousands of hours. And that's what we've been doing to gather up our, our right OPEX metrics. Uh, we've been dealing with the feedstock resources from multiple locations around the world to get make sure we understand those inputs. Understanding the pricing models that are, are used in, in China and, and what we're up against from that side of it. But uh, yeah, the economic models are, are very, very deep, right down to how many people per shift, what's the power consumption, what's the dollar per kilogram per hour of product produced, all, all the KPIs that, that drive you to uh, success at the end of the day. And, and not, not doing it by grabbing the seat of your pants and making a guess, but being very precise and understanding what that number looks like, because that, that drives your success and profitability at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, we, we've been um, engineering, uh, again, boring stuff, you know, uh, distillation systems and acid recycling systems and, and understanding uh, uh, how to deal with uh, different um, uh, radioactive uh, uh, dropouts, how to, you know, create oxalates, how to create all sorts of different uh, output products. Um, very complex, but be very smart about it. You know, get your economic feet right on the ground and uh, you'll do a good job at the end of the day serving customers. Something I thought was very smart that I heard your team communicate earlier was that you're using a competitive model with what the Chinese are pricing it at, not the rest of the world. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, we're and, and Think back at your um, CMI event in Toronto, uh, Tracy, I happened to give a bit of a talk about what that pricing index looks like from China. And, and there's a lot of uh, state controlled puppeteering of pricing. So you've got to be aware that, uh, you know, if, if someone wanted to try to drive you down, they could. But if you know your economics, you know where you stand and if, and if you're negotiating your contracts properly with your customers, automotive, wind energy, whatever, then then you'll protect yourself and you'll protect your customer at the end of the day. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at the uh, uh, the numbers that come out of uh, China. We're looking at the, the history over the last five years and then more more recently saying, OK, 2020 is when electrification uh, you know really started to kick in. What do the numbers look like for NDPR, uh, NDNPR, specifically terbium dysprosium, the magnet inputs? What do they look like beginning in 2020? And, and you've got some real spikes and then some downward trends. And, and you know, you try to figure out, OK, what happened? That was a COVID lockdown. Uh, this was a uh, an intentional state play, but, but you've got to look at that that yo-yoing of pricing. You've got to figure out how to level that out and and uh, give your customer best in kind uh, pricing at the end of the day. You don't want to puppeteer the market, particular automotive. You want to give give them a really tight range where they can rely on it for at least a five year period. And our models are based on that. So you've invested in the infrastructure. Your technology is proven, tested. You're moving it to the next level. Dare I ask what we as shareholders should anticipate in the upcoming quarter? Well, in the upcoming quarter, uh, I'm anticipating you'll hear about a couple of interesting offtake arrangements. Uh, as I mentioned, our team uh, earlier, our team just returned from Tokyo, where uh, there were uh, <clears throat> there's connectivity with the Japanese uh, magnet alloy metal making industry and the automotive over there. Um, you know, the uh, when you look at what's happening outside of China, really 85% of your rare earth industry is in Japan. And so there'll be some news about what we're doing with the uh, the Japanese-U.S. connection. Japanese looking to, um, you know, get their, their uh, trenches, uh, supply trenches uh, made in the U.S. And they see UCOR as a very solid path forward for that because of our tech and what we're doing in Louisiana. Um, and, you know, you'll hear about some input feedstock arrangements that will guarantee that plant being launched on time and commissioned on time. You'll hear about specified product coming out of Kingston, specified to automotive standards that uh, that's very near at hand. Um, that, that, that's uh, crucial as well. 
and some other interesting people that are coming to Kingston to take a look, have discussions and understand how we can build a uh, more robust North American supply chain. So all, all sorts of activity that I think will be quite interesting in the uh, last quarter of 23. For everyone interested in UCOR, please go to the following website. Pat, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.